Hello, my name is Linda Chang. I'm from the University of Maryland School of Medicine. I'm here to tell you about our <clears throat> project that we just started on, on using focus ultrasound for neuromodulation in the treatment of opioid addiction. The opioid epidemic is a public health crisis in the United States that many, as many of you are familiar with this. this according to the CDC, more than 100,000 people died from drug overdose in the past 12 months and more than two thirds of them are from opioids, especially synthetic opioid related overdose have increased by 80% in the last two years. <clears throat> Previous studies, uh, preclinical study have shown that if the nucleus accumbens is lesioned as part of, which is part of the striatal structure, that can lead to reduced drug self-administration of cocaine and morphine in rat models. Therefore, some of the um, <clears throat> clinical trials are ongoing right now with deep brain stimulation, targeting the nucleus accumbens. However, that requires brain surgery. And this is hoping that this could prevent heroin, re heroin relapse uh, in patients with opioid use disorder in China and also at Rockefeller University in the US. They have open label studies going on using DB DBS. There are also multiple RTMS studies for addictions. Um, however, RTMS cannot stimulate the deep brain structures. Hence, we will test whether low energy pulse focus ultrasound targeting the nucleus accumbens will reduce opioid seeking in the red fentanyl self-administration model. Um, if this is successful, that can be translated to human treatment resistant opioid users or other addictive disorders. The overall goal of our study is to develop a novel approach for treating substance use disorders, such as opioid use disorder, by non-invasive neuromodulation of the nucleus accumbens. The rationale is that low energy pulse LIFU using ML guidance to target the nucleus accumbens will lead to non-lesional reversible suppression of neuronal activities of this key rewarding, reward seeking structure. We have three specific aims. First, we will optimize the life treatment parameters needed to suppress the nucleus accumbens activity in rats. Second, we will evaluate the optimized life treatment um, targeting both the nucleus accumbens as well as uh, the visual cortex as an active control region for decreasing fentanyl self-administration in rats. Third, we'll explore the potential additive or synergistic effects of repeated life food treatments on drug-seeking behaviors in the same rat model. Our overall hypothesis is that low-intensity focus ultrasound provided in short pulses and duty cycles targeting the bilateral nucleus accumbens will lead to non-lesional reversible suppression of neuronal activities in this structure, which in turn will lead to decreased drug self-administration in a rodent model for opioid addiction. Here's some schematics and um, images showing um, the system we have at University of Maryland, Baltimore. Um, we have an um, uh, image guided uh, therapy system, the IGT system, on the 7 Tesla Brooker system that will allow us to use ML guidance to target the brain region we want to evaluate. However, the readout for this will require something like the um, RV sequence. And currently, unfortunately, because of the sequence we have is from an older version of the ML scanner, we don't have the latest RFI sequence right now for this important readout. Therefore, we are currently using a stereo text, the stereo text coordinates to locate the nucleus accumbens with the tabletop focus ultrasound system. And this diagrams here show the location of the nuclear accumbens and also our active control region, the visual cortex. Um, in order to first demonstrate that we can uh, target the nucleus accumbens, we use a high energy um, focus ultrasound parameters. We use the one that we typically use for blood brain barrier disruption in order to uh, visualize where we had uh, sonicate the region. And as you can see from the images that we perform on our 9.4 Tesla Brooker scanner, that we actually had such high energy that we had some hemorrhages on the 
uh, susceptibility weighted imaging sequence uh, showing that we have indeed targeted the nucleus accumbens region and also on the post gadolinium T1 weighted sequence um, because we also injected microbubbles we can see that uh, that region of the brain uh, show blood brain barrier opening. Um, since our goal is not to perform blood brain barrier opening, once we can show that we can reproducibly target the same brain region using this approach, we will then uh, lower the energy to uh, focus ultrasound power for LIFU in order to perform the experiment. This will then be performed in a fentanyl self-administration rat model that my colleague Dr. Donna Kalu have um, developed and has been using for her ongoing research. Uh, these animals are trained to press a lever that will then deliver fentanyl to a catheter that's implanted in the jugular vein. And once they um, acquire this behavior after about 10 sessions or so, uh, we will then treat them with LIFU and then we will repeat the behavioral study to see if there's decreased drug self-administration. Um, we also will be <clears throat> uh, performing CFAS to evaluate the nucleus accumbens. And Dr. Kalu also have demonstrated in the past that using chemogenetic inactivation, um, such as systemic low-dose clozapine injection, which can inhibit the nucleus accumbens neurons from firing, and by doing that, you can see that uh, the animal have decreased lever press. So this is a very robust model that we can use to test our life through treatment. So our first experiment is to optimize the focus ultrasound parameters. We will test both the mechanical effects and the thermal effects of focus ultrasound at different intensities, uh, very different combination uh, of variables and we will need to do a lot more with the mechanical effects than the thermal effects. But after the focus ultrasound parameters are, are administered, one rep from each of the 27 groups will be allocated to one of the four injection groups to receive fentanyl injection at different time points, either at 2 hours, 6 hours, 24 hours, or 48 hours. So this, the same will go for the thermal effect treatments. And after they are given the fentanyl, inject fentanyl injection, we will euthanize them two hours after the injection and harvest the brain. And then we will also perform immunohistochemical studies with CFAS expression in the nucleus accumbens brain region. Once we optimize the focus social sound parameters, we will then uh, use that to apply that to the nucleus accumbens in animals that are already trained to self-administer fentanyl. And we will compare the nucleus accumbens targeting with the visual cortex or occipital lobe targeting as an active control. And we will then re-evaluate the behavior at one week intervals after the um, life food treatment for at least two weeks to see if the behavior have changed, whether they um, have gotten less um, drug-seeking behavior if they press the leaf a fewer times. We would then again euthanize them and perform histology on them. So this is just the actual um, detailed uh, experiment with the number of rats in each group. Um, in addition to the self-administration of fentanyl, we will also do a control group that will just be self-administering food to see if live food changes the food taking behavior as well. So this is the same as the previous slide, except we listed the number of animals in each arm and each um, procedure. The third aim is sort of an exploratory aim. We wanted to see if we perform repeated life food treatment, that, whether that would lead to more um, permanent or sustained behavior of reduced drug seeking behavior. So we're going to administer life food three times and evaluate them for um, drug seeking behavior after each treatment. 
This is just the detailed procedure showing um, how we will do this repeated life treatment in egg animals um, and we'll evaluate them for the progressive ratio schedule for drug-seeking behavior after each life treatment and we'll eventually harvest the brain again for immunohistochemistry, immunohistochemistry and CFAS to validate the focus ultrasound treatment. I just want to acknowledge funding from the Focus Ultrasound Foundation and also a NIDA grant that allows me to develop um, new projects such as this. And we are in, in the process and also to acknowledge my team members who have all contributed to the ongoing research plan and work that we are planning to do. And we are also recruiting a junior faculty. So anyone interested in joining our team, please contact me. Furthermore, we are seeking collaboration with anyone who has the RV sequence for the Booker 9.4 Tesla MR scanners. Please contact me. Thank you.